This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. Hey there, buddy! Alright, back in our room. I wonder how much time has passed since I laid down. It was getting dark outside. My body was soaked in sweat. It would probably be a good idea to change my sheets. At that moment, the phone downstairs rang. It was probably Mom. Mom was quite the worrywart. Maybe she had called many times, but I just didn't notice it. Oh, hi, Mion. <laughs> the ultimate Chad play pretending to be your dad. <laughs> this is one of those this is one of those harmless trolls. I like it. <laughs> After our exchange we both had a good laugh together. Oh, this is this is wholesome. <laughs> That's funny, Garf! Except I was suspicious of her even as we were laughing. Was everybody really involved in the instance? No! No! <laughs> the fact that I couldn't say no saddened me. You could say yes for this time? You lunkhead? Uh oh. Yeah, well, Satoko has been my least favorite since I was introduced to her, so the feeling's mutual. <laughs> That's Rika! Uh, my parents aren't home. Oh, never mind. That would be irresponsible. Click. Oh, Grandma Mochi is best Mochi. Aw, that's nice. Oi, oi. That's that's not how colds work, Mion. She hung up cheerfully. Rena's coming too. That's what it sounded like. I was still concerned about meeting Rena, but I guess if she was with Mion, <laughs> surely Rena's not gonna act creepily when Mion's here, right? Hmm. I heard the doorbell ten minutes later. CG? No, not CG. Hey, girls. <laughs> no problem, Nagisa. Mion showed a complete lack of concern for someone who's recovering, and Rena looked like she was worried about me from the bottom of her heart. It didn't look like there was anything behind those expressions. It seemed my face appeared a bit sullen. Oh, yes! Please be melon flavored. Rana held out the package wrapped in newspaper. There might have been about five in here. It was quite hefty. Enjoy your dinner, Aras. うん、<笑><笑> It's a town of 50 people, no one can hear us. Which is gonna be used for horror later, I'm sure. <laughs> Both of them thought my parents were home. It was because the entranceway was such a... <laughs> Let's try that again. It was because the entranceway was such a mess. I added an extra word there anyways.
お昼何食べた、uh, that's not good. <laughs> Now Mion's acting weird with the creepy eyes. Uh oh. What is that? Hang on, what does that look like? If, oh, jeez. <laughs> This is a lot creepier. Her, her empty eyes are a lot creepier when she has a gun with her, I gotta say. And yeah, okay, sure enough, in the, in the console art style, it looks like they're being mind controlled during this. Whereas here, it just looks like they're like, I don't know, possessed. A sudden question startled me, and I went wide eyed when I saw Mion. I had never seen her like that. It was a highly unsettling visage. I'm. What is going on with this? I'm very curious as to why their eyes are turning this like this. But why is she asking me what I ate for lunch? What she said was so inane that it was almost meaningless. The way she said it, it was almost like she didn't care at all about what I ate. How do we explain that we went to Hooters? Against our will, but also not really. She must have suspected I was with Uisi san. Anyway, I felt that if I hesitated or tried to change the subject, then they'd read too deep into it. So I tried answering as quickly as possible. Except, contrary to the efforts I had made, there was a pause before they replied. Hmm? Oh, jeez. This is so creepy. <laughs> This is so creepy. I love it. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> oh, yeah, this is. Mmm. <sighs> yeah, I mean, we're, if we're sick, we really shouldn't be eating out at a restaurant, so. Jeez. What is with these eyes? This is the thing I can't really fathom. Why are their eyes going weird? This is the part that's still kind of puzzling me. Unless this is just part of, like, KG losing sense of reality. But that, that wouldn't make sense in the context of just, like, he's, he's seen their eyes being empty when they're not. The glimmer from Rena's eyes had changed at some point as well. It was now sharp, as if to make me feel the faint ignorance behind her words even more. As if she already knew. That's how it looked to me. I would not go back. Zero out of ten. Mion was speaking in an unusually low tone. Almost as if she knew I had eaten at the restaurant in town. No, I'm overthinking this. I mean, both of them should have been in school at lunchtime. There was no way they could have known where I was. How the cuss do you know that? Flop. The package with the mochi I was holding slipped out of my hands. I could tell the blood had drained from my face, making me go pale. <laughs> okay. Well, it was great seeing you both. I gotta go by. <laughs> He was my creepy honorary uncle who kidnaps me in his car from time to time to drive me to inane places. Don't wait. Don't you have one of those? <laughs> Oh, uh, I think that's my mom calling me. I could feel the back of my throat going dry. This was no longer a bluff. They knew everything? It took everything I had to finally force those words from my throat. My knees were shaking. That's not a reason. Mion sneered knowingly, and her laugh seemed to carry on forever. She didn't laugh! You know, girls, food, guns, football. That kind of thing? Anyways, it was lovely to see you both. I think I need to go. I really gotta use the bathroom right now. Why would you. You are very stupid! <laughs> Why would you just volunteer that information? You literally just saying that, we, that you talked about them behind their backs. Uh, <laughs> creepy run is back! Creepy run is back! 
Okay, you guys are behaving a little off-puttingly. I think I think you guys need to have some sleep. Rana's unwavering gaze pierced through my eyes and peered further inside of me. I dug my own grave. My heart was throbbing so much it felt like it was going to explode. I wish I could make my eyes look like a lizard's eyes when I when people were making me uncomfortable. Okay, well this is a little creepy. I think you I you know, mm, I think it's time for me to move. Uh, so if you could just step outside, that would be great. <laughs> I couldn't even shake my head. It took everything I had to stop my teeth from chattering. She never let her gaze break from mine, even as she tilted her head slightly. I just can't imagine why! I just had this creepy police officer be like, Your friends are terrible, and you're gonna die next year. I can't imagine why that would make my fever worse. That's a great idea, Rena. I'll do just that as soon as you both leave. Yeah, see? Okay, Mion's, Mion's got it. As if nothing had happened, they both giggled at to each other and started making their way out. Did we just imagine that? Because... <laughs> Just, hang on, okay, hang on. If we scroll back up, if we just read this without their facial expressions, how does it read? What did you eat for lunch? I ate out. You ate out for lunch. Yeah, that, I mean, it makes sense, because he's sick. Was it good? Like, all of this is normal dialogue. It's just, we saw them with creepy eyes, which made it creepier. This is weird, because she just knew. How the heck did she know? I don't I realize that. None of this is like outright sinister dialogue, though. Hmm. <laughs> wow! What kind of a scumbag do you have to be to fake having cancer to get people's money? What the heck? That, that's that's definitely a time where it would be great to have lizard eyes. <laughs> I hadn't moved a muscle since I had dropped the package of mochi. As they left, the door slowly closed behind them. All I could do was stare. As if I couldn't move until the door was completely closed. Just as the door was about closed, it opened again slightly with a sudden creak. Excuse me. Sending my heart racing once again. Uh... That's normal. <laughs> That's normal. <laughs> Single eye peered in for that narrow slit, and Mion's hawkish gaze peered back at me once again. <laughs> That's not ominous or anything. <laughs> oh. Oh. Okay, see, all of this dialogue... The only reason it is creepy is because they look creepy. Which is interesting. They're not actually they're not actually like threatening us in any way. It's literally just like they're saying normal stuff, but in creepy voices with like creepy looking I don't know what's going on. Thud. The door closed. Maybe Keiji's just reading too much into it. Maybe he thinks they're being creepy, but they're actually not. <laughs> I wasn't able to move a muscle even after the low laughter died off into the distance, and silence once again enveloped the room. Coming back to my senses, the first thing I did was lock the door. Now his parents are going to be like, Keiichi, what the heck? They knew what Uisi-san and I talked about. Why? That I don't get. <sighs> yeah. This is the problem. Scammers do so much damage, because not only are they taking money, they're also making it a lot harder for people who, like, you know actually have the stuff they're pretending to have to actually get help. Why? How? No. That wasn't important. Thinking about it now, all of it could have been overheard from the beginning when uisi san met me. Just as Mion said, I couldn't hide anything. Then, what were they trying to tell me? That part was obvious. They were warning me not to say anything unnecessary. 
What did they deem unnecessary? I only talked to Fuisi-san about one thing. And they were warning me that it, that was unnecessary. What was it that Uisi-san talked to me about? The incidents of involving Oyashiro-sama's curse that occurred every year weren't individual cases, but were connected as a whole. As well as the fact that they may be there may be multiple perpetrators hidden within Hinamizawa. No, more precisely, that Mion, Rena, Satoko, and Rika-chan were all suspicious. They're not suspicious! I don't get why everyone why he thinks that they're suspicious. He knows they're innocent. He should know that they're innocent. Is that what they're warning me up against? <laughs> I hit my own face hard enough that it let out a loud slap. Mm. That was not a very intimidating sounding slap. If only that would wake me from this nightmare. But for some reason it felt like I was punching a blanket. It was almost laughably painless. I feel insulted. Yes, I, I did a wimpy slap. So sue me. Calm down, Keiji Maibara. When did I become such a pessimist? Calm down. Calm down. Settle down and sort things out. The reason Mio knew I was eating lunch with Luisi-san... Luisi-san? <laughs> Luigi-san! Was probably because somebody from Hinamizawa just happened to be there at that time. They must have told Mio that I was there. That made the most sense. Plus, come to think of it, she didn't ask me where I ate lunch, did she? She only asked, was it good? They were just curious, since I was together with someone not from Hinamizawa. It's not as if they had any ulterior motives. That could be true. That's it. That has to be it. Thinking about it that way, it was the same with Rena. I was just being strangely ambiguous about when I met with Luisi-san, and Rena was just correcting me on that. That's when I was bewildered by the changing character from the usual mild-mannered Rena, and was just startled by it. That's the most natural way of thinking about it. It felt like my mind was mi a mixed-up tangled mess of spaghetti. It does feel like that! He's got, like, two voices inside of him, almost. Are, are, we, are we mentally ill and don't realize it yet? Maybe that's what's going on. Deep red marinara sauce would have poured out my nose and ears if you squeezed my head. Thinking that, I suddenly felt like vomiting. I really didn't want that to happen, so I stopped holding my head. Lately, I had no idea what anyone was saying. Spending time with them was fun. It didn't feel like there was any sort of hidden agenda. I really do think that they're a good bunch of people. When I just moved here and couldn't make heads or tails of everything, they were really kind to me. Rena was really kind and always looked after me. As long as that strange affliction didn't rear its ugly head, she was really pretty cute. Mion is also a really good person. She didn't care about anyone's age or gender and was optimistic and outgoing. I was never bored when I was with her. And talking of not getting bored, rambunctious Satoko was a good person for that too. She was pretty bratty, but that was just the way she interacted with others. Well, that's a problem. That gotta change. Rika-chan was the same way. She didn't speak often, but that didn't mean she was always silent. They're my friends! But... After hearing of the better untold secrets of Hinamizawa from Uisi-san and Tomotake-san, when I was told about Oyashiro-sama's curse, things started going crazy. You're just... It's just in your head. You're just... It's, you're being paranoid. Maybe take a... Take a nice, good, long rest, get a psychiatric evaluation, and we'd be good, right? Then hearing from Uisi-san that Rana, Mio, and Satoko, and Rika-chan were all suspicious. After that, everyone chained. Everyone chained? No, 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 that's a different chapter. <laughs> everyone is in chains! No! <laughs> With Ganon. That's right. It all started getting weird after Uisi-san told me all that strange stuff. Convenient! I told you guys, I'm suspicious of Uisi-san. At that time, I really should have. Should have just not listened to those weird stories. I shouldn't have even asked Tomotake-san about the past incidents on the night of the Watanagashi. If I just got, hadn't gotten that strange sense of curiosity. If I just hadn't. That's right. So that's why they... Oh. <laughs> why are they redacting? This is an M-rated game. So that's why they booped Tomotake-san. What? Did they censor the word kill? Because the other word doesn't make sense in this context. That impudent outsider speaking to the likes of me after everybody went out of their way to keep it a secret from me. Keiji's censoring himself. It's like me! <laughs> they, they'll they probably boop we see San as well. For trying to unearth at what everyone was warning me it was better left buried. Besides that, he was unforgivable for spewing words that made me doubt the others. 
Of course a guy like that's going to be BOOPED! Both Tomotake-san and Uisi-san were nothing but outsiders, after all. They were entities that couldn't coexist with the people of Hinamizawa. Those guys would just fall to Yoshiro's Kama's curse and just BOOP! Or is this the case of the nobody stealing words again? It wasn't their fault. It was my fault for not being able to hold back my curiosity. It wasn't their fault. It wasn't their fault. It wasn't their fault. It wasn't their fault. Wasn't their fault. <laughs> I settled into a daze. It was a lethargic feeling, like I had just gotten up, but the ominous chill that haunted me had subsided. I was fine now. I was no longer frightened. I had I am completely recovered. I'll go to school tomorrow, right as rain. I'll greet everyone. I'll take part in club activities. It'll definitely be fun. It had to be fun. I was one of them, after all. Ah, I remembered the homework the two brought with them when they visited me. But wow, our club did delivery. That was something else. I picked up the package I'd dropped on the floor and headed into the living room. It would be nice, I guess, to have some tea with it. To fill my mouth with mochi while drinking tea. Oh. This was quite a delectable situation I was in. Opening up the newspaper wrapping, there were five plump red bean paste mochi fit snugly inside. Red bean? Eh. No thanks. There were letters written from left to right on, on the newspaper. A, B, C, D, and E. Now then. They said Rena made one of these. I wonder which one. There wasn't much difference in how they looked. They smelled and appeared about the same. Bakery made mochi tastes better than the regular store-bought. Red bean is delicious. I'm not really a bean guy. Like, I, I love green beans. Those are great. But most beans in general don't really do it for me. But maybe I should try bakery mochi. I haven't tried that before. Maybe if I get the chance, I will order that. This was a pretty difficult problem. The biggest difference was probably their shape. I wasn't sure about what kind of person Mion's grandma was, but Rena's had to be different from hers. Looking carefully, I could see one mochi that was made very neatly. So well that just by staring at it, one could tell that it stood out. Calm down and think even harder. Mion had said that her grandma made a ton of them and was told to give some out, if I remembered correctly. So that meant four of these were from that large batch. Then what about Rena? She probably only made one, so she probably spent quite a bit of time on it. Meaning, the one that Rena had made was this one. E. For a moment, I thought it may have been a trap Mion laid, as she knew I'd pick up on it, but that probably wasn't the case. I wouldn't be so sure if I knew Mion had made it, but since she had said Rena made it, it probably wasn't a trap. <laughs> In the red corner, Mion's grandma! <laughs> yeah, shunny! <laughs> you ready to get your butt whooped? <laughs> hmm. Not bad. The smooth bean paste and the soft, chewy texture left a little to be dis left little to be desired. The tea I drank afterwards also accentuated the experience. This was an exquisite piece of work. Now, how about Rena's? The creation was so delicate, one could think it was a high-class Japanese dessert. Since I normally had quite the appetite, I was slightly worried about the size of the portion. But well, first a bite. This was a quite a difficult one to judge, actually. The ingredients were exactly the same, so there was a little difference in flavor. What was different was how it was shaped at the end, so it was to be expected. So the deciding factors would be presentation and volume. The well-formed and well-sized champion versus Rena the challenger, with a size you just couldn't get enough of. I'd only had one bite of Rena's. I would probably have to wait until after I was done eating to make my decision. Maybe there was something hidden inside that could cause an upset. Mm, 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 mm. It seems my prediction was right. My tongue touched something. It didn't feel like something edible, so I reached in with my fingers and grabbed it. What? What was this? Before I could fully comprehend what it was, I threw away the rest of the mochi I was eating as fast as I could. What did you find? It slammed against the wall, causing the bean jam to splatter. Then after sticking for a moment, it slid down to the floor. I was dumbstruck by my own actions. What was I doing? 
Ren had gone out of her way to make it for me. How could I? Dumbstruck, I looked down at the hand that had performed such a vile act. Then I remembered what I had taken out of my mouth. At first I thought it was a hair. Even though it was shorter than Mion's, Rena's hair was still quite long. And it wasn't this short. It was also a bit too hard to be hair. It was thick enough to roll around on my tongue. There was a bit of a metallic sheen on one end of it. Ah, uh, yes, there was a hole for where the thread goes through, like it was a sewing needle. She put a needle? In the bun? Okay, may okay, never mind. My theory was off base. You're you can't hallucinate and when feeling a needle. I don't think that's how hallucinations work. Yes, that's right. It looked very much like a sewing needle. Exactly like one. The end was pointed as well. Quite sharply. She stuck a freaking needle in there! Okay, well, yeah, I think that's my theory out the window then. It really did look like just just look like a sewing needle. Huh? What did I mean by it looked very much like a sewing needle just a bit ago? I couldn't answer. But a voice inside me already knew, and let me know by chattering my molars together. I couldn't stave off the terror welling up inside of me. Suddenly I tasted something metallic and felt a prickling pain at the end of my throat. I stuck my finger in the back of my mouth and felt around to see if it was bleeding. Suddenly I felt the urge to vomit. Well, that's what happens when you push your fingers in the back of your throat, bruh. The sharp taste of bile irritated the back of my throat. I clasped both my hands over my mouth, and after writhing in agony, I was somehow able to hold back the nausea. I was finally able to breathe normally again, but this time my heart was throbbing intensely. Then, it finally registered. Exactly what was mixed in with the mochi. Before I could think of the correct word, my hands were already on the move. Splat! I tossed the rest of the mochi against the wall. Oh no! You're gonna have to clean that up now, Keiji. The geometrical patterns of the scattered bean jam on the wall suddenly invoked a terrible omen in my mind. After looking away, I dashed out to the hall and flew upstairs to my room, where I stayed under the covers until morning. So your parents are just going to come home and be like, What the heck? Keiichi threw five mochi against the wall, just left it there, deadbolted the door, and wouldn't let us in. I think at this point, Keiichi, you gotta go see a psychiatrist, bruh. I clutched my own shoulders, howling madly in a fix of, mix of fear, anger, sadness, and frustration. This wasn't a fret, or a warning, or a reminder. Nothing as simple as that. What had happened in Hinamizawa? What is happening in Hinamizawa? What would happen? I didn't know the answer to any of those questions. Where did I break a taboo? Regardless, now Rena and Mion, and others. They consider me an enemy, and they thought I should just die! I won't let you kill me! Not for such a pointless reason! I fell into a restless sleep as I was crushed by my negative emotions. It was as if I was being drawn into a billowing bottomless swamp. Okay. Keiichi, you're losing it, I think. Still don't know what the heck is up with the needle, though. That... That throws a needle in veins. <laughs> That was not funny. New chips unlocked. A drug that makes you kill yourself? And fret. Achievement unlocked. Hard to swallow. Boo. <laughs> Alright. Let's go to the new tips. What is a drug that makes you commit suicide? I think this is going to put me on a list of some kind. <笑>自殺させる薬ってないんですか直接的にはない。遠回しですね。では間接的にはあるってことですか自殺したくなる精神状態を誘発することはできる。ちゅうことだ。難しい言い方になりましたね。何ですかその自殺したくなる精神状態
interesting. <笑>自殺をする気力すらないからだ。逆の状態もまた自殺を汚染。今度は逆に非常に自信過剰で行動的なので、自らを順風満帆と思う。だから自殺などせんのだ。ああ。なるほどね。どっちの状態でも自殺
<laughs> I know. Uzi, Uzi needs his priorities in straight. He's like, I know I should be looking into the victim's background, but man, Hooters is in the area, and I feel like Keiichi needs to pick me up. I'll tell him that his friends are trying to kill him. <laughs> これがずるいんですよ。お互いの名前で事前運動バンバン。片方の選挙中にはもう片方が別に講演会を開いて、20に選挙運動やってんですよ。堂々と。よくわかんないんですけど、それって公選法違反じゃないんですか事前運動になら
This tops up the employee severance payment. That tends to be how it's done around here. Of course, it's not exactly a commendable custom. Incidentally, the difference between that two pay grades makes to the payout is quite significant. Use the taxpayer money responsibly, because <laughs> we don't like paying for fiends that are bad. It certainly wasn't a laughing matter, but I'll laugh through it anyways. Hello, Maelstrom Fenrir. Welcome. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And if you want to join in for the ride, then you are welcome to. Otherwise, I appreciate you popping in. <laughs> You're asking a lot for a guy who goes to Hooters. <laughs> I closed the door roughly, interrupting the department chief's conversation a bit rudely. It looked like he still had something to say, but he just smiled wryly and waved. I waved in return. The cab sped up gradually and soon disappeared among the sea of lights. <laughs> why are we getting the close why are we getting the close up of his face? He's taking a selfie right now. I'm so glad we went out of our way to watch that scene. That it contributed nothing. Except that we learned that Mion's family is like the Yakuza in some way. That's cool. Stay away from Mion. 